The following segment is presented in partnership with Future 42. Turn your frustration into action at future42.org. As I mentioned, I participated in the public safety rally over the weekend in honor of the Kwan family. There was a moment of silence at the intersection where the shooting happened, and then we marched just a few blocks away to the sushi restaurant that the Kwan family owns. It was really an emotional day. As I was saying earlier, kind of fitting that it was raining. It kind of matched the mood that everyone had. Very somber day. The event was organized by a woman named Susanna Kyleman, and she is a past political candidate. She's a Republican, um, but she's not in public office right now, but she's also a Korean American. And so in that sense, I think she felt a connection uh, to the Kwan family and was just devastated like so many of us in what had happened. I was really grossed out, to be honest, that there were some anti-police groups in Seattle that were posting pictures of Susanna Kyleman and, you know, suggesting that she was some right wing person with a right wing agenda for holding this rally again for a pregnant woman who was who was murdered. It was just really strange. So anyway, I invited Susanna on today to talk about why she felt compelled uh, to do this and also to have her react to some of the weird hate and vitriol she got online for the simple act of caring about public safety. Susanna, welcome to Undivided. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. What compelled you to put this together? Oh, a couple of things. Um, I'm very involved in the AAPI community. And when this happened, my girlfriends and I, we have this kind of running text message and we're kind of always talking about like, what can we do for the community? What can we do for the community? And the event happened. And um, most people know I did run for office previously. And so a lot of the text messages that were coming through were, we know that you're in a position to do something because you were a candidate before. Are you already doing something? People are automatically assumed I was already doing something. And I was keeping tabs on social media because I was expecting the community, to do, the AAPI community to do something. And they were reaching out to me saying, what are you doing? Um, how can we help? And so we were brainstorming for a while on this text message. And it started, you know, the, the community in itself is very much keep your head down, maintain a quiet um, composure. If you do speak, make sure that it's effective. And um, we didn't want to do something that was quiet, that didn't also serve a message that this needs to be brought to the spotlight, but more importantly, that a solution needs to be put forward that works. And so um, we just thought, why not just do a, a very peaceful March to bring focus to this incident and um, bring everyone together. Everyone was invited and that's exactly what happened. And I wasn't honestly sure who was going to show up. You know, I didn't know if it was going to be 10 people or hundreds of people. So I was very happy that that many people showed up from all over Washington state to, to pay respects to Ina and her family. Yeah, and for people who didn't go, and and I was there, and it was a really nice, peaceful um, event, and you know, I saw a lot of people. Uh, you know, the city attorney was there, um, Olga Sagan was there, um, Bob Kettle was there, who's running also to represent downtown. Um, so a lot of people who I know to care about public safety. What was your? You gave remarks um, outside of the Quan family's restaurant. What is the message that you really wanted to get across? That this was 100% preventable. I mean, I resonate personally with this because I'm a woman. I'm a Korean American. My mom was an immigrant who had a small business. And even though Ina was in her 30s, I saw that as that, that could have been my mom in her 30s. Or that could have been any one of us. That could have been one of my girlfriends. And I have so many close personal ties to Seattle. So the main focus was just bringing attention to this incident, bringing attention to her GoFundMe page because they're going to need that, especially because they were small business owners. Um, because she has a child, or they're going to have medical expenses. So I wanted to draw attention to their GoFundMe page specifically because money does help that family heal. Um, but more importantly, that this was preventable and that we need solutions. You had mentioned, you know, the Asian American community kind of keeps a low profile, but there, I mean, increasingly so, there have been a couple instances where they've really come out in force to ask uh, leaders to help keep them safe. I mean, I'm reminded of the march that happened in the Chinatown International District over a planned homelessness complex that no one wanted there, 
you know, input on. And then you had this March as well. Do you think there's sort of an awakening going on where the AAPI community is like, okay, we're not, and we can't be silent anymore about this stuff? Absolutely. And, and we don't want this past Saturday to be where it stops. We want this to be the beginning of change. And what we've seen out of those events is a lot of virtue signaling, declaring racism a public health crisis, hashtag stop Asian hate, hashtag support small businesses, hashtag support minorities. What does that hashtag do if it's not followed by good policy? Nothing. If you're showing up to events and claiming your ties to Korea or, or showing your ties to the African-American community, put policy together that protects that demographic. But really, safety needs to be for everyone. Safety is the best form of inclusion that we can provide. Yeah. Yeah. In the, and I'll just um, I've kind of not challenge you on this, but, you know, when the uh, march happened in the Chinatown International District, I think it had been very clear that that's a community that had been used to, for photo ops by progressive leaders. And then when they wa dared to, you know, want to say in this homelessness complex, they were sort of ignored. But uh, in the case of the shooting with the Quans, is there any indication that, that, racism against Asian Americans motivated it? We don't want this to be smoke and mirrors. We want this to be about good policy. Yeah. The solution doesn't require calling out um, the fact that this was a Black versus a Korean American. You can't ignore those components, of course, because of the historical cultural significance between Blacks and Koreans. But the solution doesn't mean we further that divide between those two cultures and demographics. Solution really has to be about policy. And again, policy is universal. I've got to ask you about something that I will be honest, infuriated me to watch unfold. Leading up to the rally and afterward, there were attacks from anti-police factions online who said, you know, they were posting pictures of you saying, oh, she's just a Republican. She's coming up from DuPont. This is some right wing rally to further a Republican agenda. I imagine you saw some of that. Of course. And and before I even get into that, I want to draw attention to something. If we put focus on race and we put focus on the fact that this is a hate crime, our government can't even handle regular crime. What makes us think that they're going to handle a hate crime? Again, labeling it as just being virtue signaling. Yeah. In regards to the comments online, I just have to ask, what are you doing to be a part of the solution? A lot of MAGAs, a lot of people on the far right would disagree. And they actually call me a rhino and they think that I am not Republican enough. So I think that's quite funny, but I'm also not going to be a victim of cancel culture. I'm a Republican. Deal with it. I'm here with a solution. I'm not running for office right now. I ran for office in the past. I lost my campaign. That doesn't mean that I can't be a grassroots leader. Yeah. I mean, it could have been anyone. And I don't even think we have to say more about it. It's so... I, you know, it's so sinister to me, but I yeah. also think it kind of undercuts their position because if every time there's a call for public safety, you call it right wing, then that tells me that you're not for public safety. Like is only the right for public safety and you're saying the left isn't. Um, so yeah. it's it's a very odd thing, but I, I um, commend you for doing it, for taking the the uh, pushback from just crazy people online. And what uh, what's next, do you think? Yeah, so I was introduced um, to a whole bunch of grassroots organizations that are already active. And so I want to draw attention to those grassroots organizations. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. Everyone wants good policy. Everyone, everyone wants us to be inclusive. Um, but I do think it is important that the solution does involve both voices from all spectrums. I spoke with a lot of people that came up to me right away and self-identified immediately to say, hey, I'm a liberal, I voted for the people that are making these horrible decisions. I saw the gentleman that had the anti-gun sign. I'm glad he was there. The First Amendment protects everyone. He was welcome there. I encourage everyone, if you want to be a part of the solution, show up and be a part of the solution. Yeah, I thought it was interesting for people, uh, just to give a little context to what you said there, there was a a man, I was actually marching next to him, who had a sign about gun control. Now, I disagree with the sentiment that this shooting, which happened you know, which perpetrated by someone who was prohibited from having a firearm and used a stolen firearm to commit the crime. I disagree with the sentiment that it could have prevented it. But, you know, nobody said anything to him. Nobody harassed him for his position. And then he went on Twitter and posted him and his sign saying he felt like he was infiltrating a, you know, a right-leaning rally. And I, what I said to him is I said, did, 
how, but how did people treat you? <laughs> you know, they treated you just fine. The more ideas, the better, even if I disagree yeah. with them. So Susanna, thank you so much for doing this. Um, I know you. it's really meaningful for a lot of people in Seattle. And so I look forward to seeing uh, what else the, I mean, fastest uh, growing voting block in America, the Asian yeah. American community. And so I know it's not just about politics, but if they want to feel safe and they don't feel like the people in power are keeping them safe, then, you know, they ought to be paying attention to what that's going to do for their reelection campaign. So Susanna, thanks for being here. Thank you, Brandy. Yeah, just a really, truly insane sentiment. And honestly, as I alluded to with Susanna there, if the, the far left in Seattle wants to act like public safety is a Republican thing, then fine. Republicans can absolutely embrace it and go with it, because I think most reasonable people ref, uh, left, right, and center want to feel safe. Who doesn't want to feel safe when they're walking around? So I think we let the far left uh, fringe of the Democratic Party fade into obscurity as they continue to you know, have these anti-public safety sentiments, because at the end of the day, it's going to work against them, hopefully. That segment was brought to you in partnership with our friends at Future 42. Turn your frustration into action at future42.org.